So it's like, what else do you expect them to do? He really, really, really loves her. He has gotten away with this for several years. And y'all, we couldn't even stop watching Netflix for money. Oh, this is uncomfortable. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to another episode of Really Uncomfortable, a series where we tackle any topic we feel and if it makes you uncomfortable, we feel like you definitely need to talk about it. All right, y'all, so today's episode, we're on episode two. I am going to be tackling, as you know, some American media hot topics and a couple of Nigerian hot topics. For the most part, we're gonna be addressing something very serious that we will never forget in the Nigerian hot topics and also something that kind of highlights somebody who has been used for salacious media fodder in the last couple of days you know yes we're gonna get right into it go ahead and subscribe for more episodes for more content like this I'll also be doing reaction videos as well I'm gonna be doing a reaction to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion and I also do a challenge series where I recap the challenge on MTV spies lies and allies so stay tuned for that hit the post notification bell so you'll be notified every time that I post a new video. I'm going to be posting every Tuesday and Saturday for Really Uncomfortable and every Thursday for the challenge. All right, let's get started, y'all. So first, I always do a royalty award. The royalty award is where we highlight somebody, whether they're known or somebody who might be relatively unknown that is doing something to impact our society and move our community forward. All right, guys, so I want to give the royalty award to this beautiful, she is a former supermodel. She's an amazing YouTuber, actually. I believe she's also an actress. I'm sorry, y'all, if y'all see something in my mouth. <laughs> I'm working through a cold. I just had to get this video out to you guys, so excuse me. But yes, I'm gonna be giving the royalty award to a YouTuber named Fumi Desaluvold. I don't know if you guys know her. I just started to know about her. I saw her a while ago, but I wasn't sure who she was. So she's this gorgeous, she's half Nigerian, half Gambian. I think she's in her 50s, but she is so fabulous she gives amazing advice she does sister to sister talks and I just love her energy like I've been watching her the last few um, days the last few weeks and just been like y you better be 50 something years old thriving on YouTube pivoting your career she was a supermodel in the past and the fact that she's also Nigerian you know like I love that she's Nigerian and she's Gambian and her love story is really beautiful. She married her husband after a week of knowing him at 39 years old. And she had a beautiful child. Like, y'all should go check out her channel. I'm going to link her channel below. Like, she's awesome. So, Auntie Fumi, as they call her, I am definitely giving you the royalty award. I just felt like the advice that she gave was really excellent. The way that she speaks is admirable and, like, just really genuine. Her energy is so great. Like, I just, I, I, I love, 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 love it, right? So yeah, she's getting my royalty award today. Mwah! So y'all, now let's get into these hot topics, y'all. I'm gonna start with American media because I wanna end with something really serious when it comes to Nigerian media. So we're gonna start with the mess, okay? I'm going to read this as it is stated, okay? Following last week's announcement, transgender employees and supporters stage a walkout to protest Dave Chappelle's stand-up special, The Closer. The moment finally came earlier today, and in addition to calling him out once again, a list of demands drove their point home. The organizer of the Netflix walkout spoke to the crowd of protesters and slammed Dave Chappelle for allegedly refusing to meet, but is the long list of demands the protesters have for Netflix that signal the backlash is far from over. Deadline reports, Ashley Marie Preston, the organizer of today's Netflix walkout, did not mince words when it came to openly criticizing Dave Chappelle. And so I want to make it very clear that this isn't an instance of cancel culture because I've invited Dave Chappelle to have transformative dialogue with us on multiple occasions. And he has made it clear that it is not of interest to him. So just to be clear, this isn't cancel culture, but an avoidance of accountability when we've invited you to be a part of the repair that it takes to be able to not only heal culture, but to move all of us forward. To a crowd of more than 100 protesters. All right, y'all. So I don't know if you guys have seen it. I have not seen it. Dave Chappelle had a comedy special called The Closer and he addresses a lot of things in the comedy special and apparently if you watch it you get more context but 
these employees who are transgender at Netflix or who are in the LGBTQIA plus community or who just are against what Dave Chappelle was talking about. I guess he made some disparaging jokes about transgender people trivializing their experience in some way. So they are trying to get his special pulled and have a list of demands for him. Let me first let me read the demands and then I'm going to get into my thoughts on this whole thing. So this is the list of demands y'all this and it's a list child. It's, it's, it's long. I'm going to put it up on the screen. I'm not going to read everything. I'm going to try to skim through it because you know time is not on our side but I, I'm just going to you know get the highlight. So basically their demands include eliminate references slash imagery of Chappelle inside of the workplace including but not limited to murals, posters, room names, swag which is like the bags that they give gifts, acknowledgement that the special causes harm to the trans community and Netflix's responsibility on it so we keep the conversation around transphobia evolving internally. Trans and non-binary content investment, a new fund to specifically develop trans and non-binary talent. The comparable class of investment should include but not limited to works produced by Dave Chappelle, such as the investment in The Closer and Sticks and Stones, Ricky Gervais's Afterlife, etc. And lastly, boost promotion for disclosure and other trans affirming titles in the platform. Okay, so they don't want The Closer necessarily pulled, but they want a disclaimer in front of it, kind of like Disney has on some of its films where it says that um, this stuff was racist, it was wrong then, it's wrong now. I don't know if y'all have seen that when you watch Disney movies that have like racial, you know, epithets or whatever in it. That's basically what they're asking for. So these are my thoughts. You know, at first I didn't want to judge it based on just the few clips that I saw because I've seen his other specials and he's kind of well-rounded and you kind of got to see the whole thing to understand what he's trying to say. But the only thing that I feel like I understand the outrage and I understand this level of demands is because Ashley Marie Preston, the person who's basically leading this protest and walkout of Netflix, has said that she has tried to reach out to Dave Chappelle several times to have a conversation and that he's not interested in that. So it's like, what else do you expect them to do? What else do you expect people who feel marginalized, who feel like they're being targeted, who are still not given the proper even awareness, like forget, like, I mean, not forget, but you know what I mean? Without even getting to the point of equality, even for people to be aware of trans issues, especially black trans issues. And then if they're trying to have a conversation with you and then you're not responding or you are responding negatively, like you don't want to be a part of that conversation, then I mean, I can understand how, how if it's, it's like, I mean, what else do you expect us to do? Like at this point, we have to put our foot down and these are our demands and you need to meet them and we're not trying to cancel you we actually wanted to talk to you and you felt like you were too big to talk so this is what it is so I just feel like hey everybody has a right if it was a white person on Netflix y'all come on those of y'all that have a problem with this if it was a white person on Netflix a white comedian making racist jokes about black people getting killed or about black lives matter or anything like that in this time in this day and age in this in this 2021 that Breonna Taylor's killers have still not been arrested I think that we would all feel very strongly and we would be protesting but then I'm like, are people upset that the trans community is actually like galvanizing together to actually get this walkout done? Because it's not even just the trans community. These are people that work at Netflix that are risking their jobs to do this. And y'all, we couldn't even stop watching Netflix for Monique. So I'm just saying, let people protest what they feel like is offensive, is dangerous to their own survival. I think that everybody has that right. So that's my feelings on it. I would have been maybe feeling some type of way like, okay, relax, maybe. If not for the fact that she clearly said that she reached out and he's not interested in having conversations. So at, what, at that point, what else can you do? So now we're going to move on to the next topic, y'all. It's more drama. So R. Kelly, the disgraced singer, you know, he was found guilty for his racketeering case, his sex trafficking case. But he will be having his child pornography case in 2022. The quote Pied Piper will be facing charges in his hometown of Chicago for child pornography and obstruction of justice charges. Judge Harry Lyndon Weber has set a trial date of August 1st, 2022. Kelly won't be in the courthouse alone. His longtime associates and co-defendants, Daryl McDavid and Milton June Brown will also be there. Reports state that if the Chicago federal case does make it to trial, it will likely focus on the graphic videotapes Kelly allegedly made that depicted him having sex with at least three female minors 
according to court records. While Kelly is fighting for his life and maintains his innocence, he is having an interesting experience behind bars. His attorney, Steve Greenberg, said the U.S. boroughs of prisons had previously placed Kelly on suicide watch. I mean, it really sucks. It's gross to talk about. Nobody likes to talk about this, but it is what it is. I hope that he gets all the time that he deserves. He's disgraced himself. He has disgraced every fan that loved him. And the people that are still clinging on and holding on to the legacy of R. Kelly, like y'all, y'all just gotta let it go. Let him do his time. He has gotten away with this for several years, 20, 30 years. Aaliyah was like way, way back when, right? So just let him have his time. We'll see when this trial plays out. I hate talking about R. Kelly, honestly. Like it's just really disgusting to even have to talk about it. And the fact that he even ugh, has put everybody through his his demonic possession. Like he's, he's, he's a demon, he's just a walking demon. And he's let the devil possess him. And he's harmed a lot of people. He should do the time for the crimes that he's committed. So y'all, I actually have two really fun um, hot topics, like couple stuff, so you know. I like a couple things. So first, we're gonna talk about y'all Adele. You know, Adele's coming up with her new album. We talked about her last Hot Topics. So you know, Adele has been, you know, giving us her fashions. She was sitting courtside, watching a basketball game, looking gorgeous, looking fabulous, looking like the queen that she is, being very easy on the eyes. You see what I did there? And y'all, she was with her new man, Rich Paul, who is LeBron James' manager, right? And y'all, they both just look, you know, really happy and warm and comfortable and Adele looks gorgeous as you can see in the picture and you know he looks like uncomfortable but also like happy to be there you know what I mean he's obviously not somebody who's always in the forefront but he's like happy to be next to her so it's really cute I just thought I'd mention that I thought they were really cute and then y'all so this week was Meg the Stallion and Party you know her boyfriend Partisan Fontaine you know that's his real name what a cool name they made a year in their relationship so it was their one year anniversary Anniversary this past week and so they celebrated and they both put up really cute videos of each other so um, my guys right here from Lux they helped me get you something a little better than the iPhone I think <laughs> wow. And she was just so giddy and you know, makeup free. They had matching pajamas and he did the roses and they did dinner and just, it just seemed like they had a really good, fun, chill, relaxing like time. It wasn't all dressed up and to the club, which is nice too, or all out to dinner, which is nice too. But you know, they were like just so relaxed and chill at home. And he really, really, really loves her. And I just really pray and hope that they make it the distance. I'm so happy for Megan. She deserves this kind of love. Every good woman does. So I'm just sending you guys all the light and love. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Yay. Y'all, this Kyrie Irving thing. Okay, so I didn't want to talk about this on my channel because I'm not really a basketball fan like that. I was a Kobe Bryant fan. God rest, rest his soul. If it, if it ain't Kobe, I wouldn't watch it. So once he retired, I really could care less about basketball. But, you know, my brothers care and they... I, I kind of I got the inside scoop because of their channel. They have a channel also. It's too easy. And Jay Francis, go check them out on YouTube. I'll link it below. And they kind of talked about this. So basically, Kyrie Irving is a very I guess well known player, and he's playing on the Brooklyn Nets right now. And he is not taking the COVID vaccine. And it's mandatory basically to take the COVID vaccine. So everyone is chiming in on whether he has a right to. Even Chris Brown says that he stands with him. People are feeling like, why should he be forced to take it? So, so Magic Johnson spoke out and said that he feels like he's letting his team down. Do you think every player should come out and say, I will get the vaccine, I'm vaccinated, and so should you? Oh, for sure. People listen to them. They follow them. That's very important. Plus, the last thing is this. You have said to your teammates, I'm going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't be there if you don't get vaccinated. You're letting them down. 
and then that hurts our chances of winning the championship. I would never do that to my teammates. Take one for the team, basically, and do what's best for the team. Somebody said, I can't recall who said it, but somebody said that they let Magic Johnson play with, with HIV, but they're not going to let Kyrie Irving play. Plies, y'all going to let Plies school you? Plies made a clear point. First of all, you can't catch AIDS from sweating on somebody, from bumping into somebody, from shaking hands with somebody, from hugging somebody, from touching the same basketball, from somebody, from even spitting on somebody, you can't catch AIDS. You catch AIDS from blood or from a needle that has been un, you know, kept basically, or through childbirth or through sexual intercourse. So those things are, that's not the same. COVID you catch from breathing on some damn body. That's why we all walking around with masks. So what, what? So I just feel like they just wanted to say something really disgusting and shady to Magic Johnson because he had the audacity and the nerve to speak on Kyrie Irving. Like, sir, I mean, everybody has a right not to take the COVID vaccine, but people also have a right to have an opinion about it. And that's what it is. And I don't think that you should say something as ignorant. I, I don't know who said it, but people are upset that Kyrie Irving is not allowed to play basketball because he's not taking this vaccine. How I feel about it, I'm vaccinated. I feel like you should just get vaccinated. But if you don't want to, I think it is your right if you don't want to. But it's also their right to like not let you play. So, I mean, you just make your choice. Pick your battle. Like if you don't care about playing, then don't take the vaccine. Stay, hold firm to your choices. That's your choice. That's your right. But people are going to have an opinion about it. And you know, it is what it is. That's how I feel about it. I just wanted to bring that up because I've been seeing that everywhere. And I'm just like, y'all are mad at Kyrie, child. And y'all mad at anybody that has anything to say against Kyrie. I mean, it, this these are their job. Like, Magic Johnson has a right to comment. It's Magic damn Johnson, okay? So, anyway. So, now we're gonna move on to the Nigerian hot topics, y'all. So, unfortunately, I have to bring it up because I did report on it and I have not seen it, really. I saw, like, a one-second clip by accident because they've been putting it on even Facebook. So, the Tiwa Savage sex tape came out. I know she had said that it wasn't going to come out. You guys, and hopefully you guys will never see it, but apparently it came out. I feel after I even seeing a little clip, that's not anything that anybody wants to get out. That's not anything sexy that anybody would want to get out. I don't understand why that would be recorded. I don't understand why. It was just a big blunder, a big mistake. I feel like people should just really cut her some slack. I feel like people are doing a lot. It's just a lot. It's a lot. It's like, a. I heard it's like an 11 second Snapchat video and it's bad. It's embarrassing. I hate that happened to her but I feel like we should just like move on from it. Um, everybody makes mistakes. It's a big mistake, but it's a mistake. And I think she should be allowed to move on from it. That doesn't make her a horrible person, you know, and that doesn't deserve anything and all that. And she's in disgrace and all. Like guys, come on. We've all made mistakes too on the internet. We've seen more. So lastly, there weren't that many Nigerian hot topics that I saw that I really cared to discuss, but I did want to make something very clear to Nigerian government officials that are lying to the faces and who are playing on the intelligence of Nigerian people all across the diaspora. It is exactly one year after the NSAS Lekki Toll Gate protest. Series of protesters came out nationwide in memory of the procession. Reacting in a press conference, the Minister of Information and Culture, Aladilai Mohammed, said the federal government was yet to get an evidence over the alleged killing by soldiers despite amnesty claim. One year later, and despite ample opportunities for the families of those allegedly killed and those alleging a massacre to present evidence, there has been none. Nobody's, no families, no convincing evidence, nothing. Where are the families of those who are reportedly killed at the toll gate? Did they show up at the judicial panel? Mohammed also claimed that soldiers did not shoot at protesters at the Lekki Toll Gate on October 20, 2020. He added that there was no massacre except false information circulating on social media. Sadly, the champions of the Phantom Massacre at the Lekki Toll Gate, including Amnesty International, and the CIA have continued to shamelessly hold on to their own stand. 
we will never forget that you sent out orders to have people murdered on Lecky Tollgate. I'm recording this on October 20th, which is the one year anniversary of that horrific murder. We will never forget. We stand with you. I'm Nigerian to the core. Doesn't matter where I am in the diaspora. It was horrifying and we will never forget. And in lieu of her name being used for tabloid fodder, I want to play this beautiful song that Tiwa Savage sang that she performed in honor of the lives lost at Lecky Tollgate. regardless of what happens and all of the stuff that we go through in our country, I will always stand for us. All right, guys, enjoy this video. And thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Go ahead and hit the post notification bell so you'll be notified when I post another episode. Three will be posted on Tuesday. I'll see you guys back here. Go ahead and subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, share this video, like this video, comment below what you feel about these news stories. How do you feel about the Netflix walkout, about the Netflix special? Do you feel like it was offensive? everything that we talked about. How do you feel about R. Kelly and his child pornography cases and him being on suicide watch? You know, the cutesy stuff. How do you feel about Adele and Rich Paul? Did you expect it? Are you like happy, you know? And Meg and Cardi, do you guys feel like they'll go the distance? I really, really pray so. How you feel about the Nigerian government playing in our faces? Please do let me know. And also how you guys feel about the T Y sex tape. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time, bye. Hey, hey.